This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Well, if we talk about the history of Python Web, it's like archaeology. We have to dig a bit, but well, we're not getting down to the mummies. It's more like, well, the young people would call it the old fart stuff, but well, we're doing a lot, and what is Plown starting? So, Plown, uh, the real story group said it right, Plown Solidears on as the most venerable Python-based CMS platform. So we are a CMS, not a, content ma not a framework. And Plown is the only one that plays on more than one line. So yeah, Plown, the product is the one part. We are a CMS, a content management system. We are not a web framework. What's the thing? Plone is more like a content integration framework. Somebody called that enterprise portals. We can integrate all the data in, but we are content-centric, not developer-focused. And there's the large difference. Web frameworks aim on developers. We aim on everybody who want to bring content into the world wide web. And that's a different approach. But, well, Plone is not only about the product. Plone is extremely about the community. And the community is one of the most important things. And, well, for Python there's one sentence, and that's more uh, important for the Plone community too. You come for the language, you stay for the community. Or, as one of ours said it, uh, You can take the man out of the plane, but you can't take the plane out of the man. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you stop doing Plone as your primary business, you can't stop doing the way Plone does it, because it teaches you so much, it helps you so much in other things. So a history of Python web, why Plone? Better take it with another uh, person that could describe it a bit better. It's always exciting when something in Python becomes so big, so exciting, has so many people behind it, that it winds up spinning off its own series of conferences uh, or events. Some of those are uh, remain general to the whole programming language, like the Pi Ladies, but others of them, like the Django series of conferences, become focused on a single tool. There are workplaces where they don't quite get that you're a Python programmer. You're the person who writes Django. You're the person who writes the website in Django. And on the one hand, when a new series of conferences spins up, that sometimes means we see some of those people less often. They're now busy and financially uh, committing to other conferences and don't always make it back to PyCon as often, so it can be a sort of wistful event as a part of the community uh, is seen less often. But it's a huge opportunity because of all of the people that then can show up at those conferences who we might never see here at PyCon. There are people that can't afford to send themselves to conferences whose workplaces wouldn't understand why they want to come to a conference with a schedule like ours with so many different topics. But if you show them a conference where everything is Django, 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 that's the thing we wrote our website in. We'll pay for you to go to that conference. And so many people that aren't, uh, the investment isn't in something abstract, Python, the programming language, but in some one concrete application, get the opportunity by the dozens, by the hundreds, to attend conferences that they wouldn't otherwise get the chance to. Uh, notable examples uh, are the DjangoCon series of conferences now around the world, the PyData conferences that NumFocus runs now by the dozen a year, uh, which attract many people who, uh, again, the PyCon schedule would be too diluted uh, of the things they're interested in to make it worth it, but a day or two of all data all the time, and they're there. Uh, the SciPy conferences and the other worldwide academic conferences centered around uh, Python. 
back before all of those, there was something called Plone. There was, uh, before that, uh, it was built atop a uh, framework called Zoe. And those of you who've been in the, the uh, Python world a long time, remember those groups spinning up as some of the very first events worldwide that still today go on worldwide. Focus not on Python, the language, but on one particular application that becomes so big and get so much momentum that it becomes a whole parallel community to ours. Yeah, and that's where we start. But, well, let's go to the beginning. Where have all of the things started? Well, let's start really at the beginning. In December 1990, Guido von Rossum searched for a Christmas project he could work on and he loves Monty Python. His project is an honor named after Monty Python's Flying Circus that become Python, the language. The next larger step was forming a community. The first Python workshop at all came at NIST 1994. There were just space for 20 people, 21 people showed up. That was the first conference. Well, you know, Monty Python, we do have a lot of fun, a lot of uh, connections to their names. That was the spam conferences. Those were the attendees. You remember the old farts? Those ones? Those are the same. So we have the people still around, still caring about the stuff. And if you're looking at the topics, they had at the very, very first Python conference at all, there are still topics that are relevant today. Those are the 11 topics on the list. Requirements for a safe Python environment, a standard GUI model interface, requirements for persistent objects in Python, Standard Python World Wide Web Interface, and so on. Discussing formation of a Python consortium. So, grouping the people together and making the stuff happen. But, well, how that involved? You might have already heard about those mysterious IP, uh, International Python Conference 5, where Jim Fulton was scheduled to give a talk about CGI, the Common Gateway Interface. Who remembers CGI from you? Yeah, you know, the old ancient stuff that nobody want to work with? Well, the tradition in the Zope and Plone community is on the flight in, we do our talks, we do the preparations, so he flied from Fredericksburg, Virginia to it was on the West Coast, so I think San Francisco or something, or Seattle. He learned or read the whole specification of CGI to teach it. Well, he have read so much, he didn't like. On the flight back, he started programming the things he don't like and write Bobo. Bobo become Principia. That's the $30,000 disk Paul Everett's always talking about. That's the thing where everything starts, venture capitalism in the Python world, the first Python web framework, the first Python application that becomes open source 1998 and becomes Zope. We have a lot of elements in Bobo Zope 1998 that becomes from the NIST topics, restricted Python was already in, persistence and persistent, the pickle API, the basic for the ZODB, the Z object database. What is it all about? We have seen in Martin's talk about routing. There's one more thing, it's the traversal. 
So that you say, you're not living in the file system, you're living on object. So yeah, you can just root with the pass in your URL to an active object in your Python code. That is what is object publishing about and Zoop is the Z object publishing environment. So here we see three of the topics before the 2000s already implemented, working on. Where did it come from? Where come all the people together? So there was something called the Zo uh, digital creation, which later becomes the Zoop Corporation. You may know some of the old people on there. Some of the names, Jim Fulton, Paul Everett, Tress Siever, Chris McDonald, Guido van Rossum, Barry Warsaw, Tim Peters and others. I guess the people that are doing Python long enough know some of them. And you have a lot of stories from the people in there with all the regrets they have for the stuff they did with Zoop before it becomes standard in Python. Remember, Zoop started with Python 1. Dot, I think 3 was the first one. So yeah, it becomes a lot. But Zoop is an application server. It's not a web framework. A server that runs Python in the web. You need something on top of it. It involved and there was introduced the content management framework, CMF, 1998 already. It's not looking beautiful, but it's effective, it works and everything. But hey, that's something you can present a developer, not an end user. And that's all about those people. Alex Lemmy, Alan Runyon, who met 1999 on IRC and decided, well, Zoop is fantastic. You can do a lot of it. It has so much power, but make it beautiful. And they created a package on top of CMF, CMF Plone. That becomes later Plone. But we've seen already, there was the spin-off, what Brandon Rowe told before. International Python Conference 9, 2001 had already a separate track for Zoop. If you look at some of the topics and some of the names you see on it, Paul Everett, Philip A.B. and some others, Carlos de la Guardia, so there's a lot of people that are still around or created a lot of things. And another thing that happened there, there was the first Python Software Foundation board. Or it, the Software Foundation was founded and the first board was created by people of the Zoop community. And lots of the Python communities worldwide come from the Zoop and Plon community. The DZUG in Germany, the Deutsche Zoop user group, was there far before the PySV was created. It was the predecessor. So yeah, around 2000 there was a sentence, that's more than true, where Zoop leads, Python follows. A lot of the standard library, a lot of still the legacy code in Python 2 is there just because of Zoop. A lot of the lessons from there, but yeah, hey, we said it is all about community. And the people meet together at the conferences, at the tracks. So Jim Fulton, Alan Runyon here. And it's all about giving the people more power, more enabling them. And that was 2001. Plone was released and Plone became the major factor on the Zop world. If you're looking at the theme of the early Plone, yeah, well, Lots of remember, it's the same theme. Alex Limmy afterwards donated to the Wikipedia project. So Wikipedia does not, oh, Wikipedia does look like Plone, not Plone look, look like Wikipedia in the first time. And there are a lot of other things. Sprints, the thing we all like about the Python community, we're doing working together. 
comes from us. That's the castle sprint, the legendary sprint in 2003 we have done on an Austrian castle from early 11th century. Nice stuff. You see the people with the blown shirts and everything around? So yeah, that's where we work from. You see all the people always around. And that's where we spin off. We had the first conferences, 2003, 4 and 5. And remember, if you look at the other frameworks, most of the Python web frameworks that are around today, Django, Flask, Tornado and so on, spinned up late 2004, beginning 2005. We were there almost 10 years already. As Brendan said it, there was the beginning. And, well, while Zorb has become the killer application at that time, written in Python, clone was the killer application on top of Zorb. So if we look at the community and the community size, it, it was becoming so much overlap that the clone community almost took over the whole Zorb community. And you see the connections between the people and meeting together at different locations, different um, locations, like Guido at the Europython with the Plone community. And well, that's where we are. And as Hanno said it, every piece of soap that was not adopted by Plone is literally dead. So yeah, it's, it's history of Plone. And we as the Plotting community has celebrated our 15th anniversary last October. And, well, Plown, but Zop is not that. We still care for it. We take over the maintenance and everything to bring it to the Python 3 Wonderland. And there we want to go. And it's all about lessons learned. It's the good, the bad. We have learned a lot of, from our mistakes. And we keep our users and developers in mind. But remember, SOAP was started in 1996. 1996. If you look at the PEPs, the Zen of Python, the legendary philosophical rules we apply for Python that all the other frameworks could build on top of was written in mind the mistakes we have done in our code. PEP 20 is from 2004. The first PEP is from 2000. PEP 8, the coding convention, from 2001, where almost 80% of the code that still lives today in the soap world was already written. So yeah, it's difficult to work on legacy. But we do care and we do take it forward. But hey, those who do not study soap are condemned to reinvent it. That's the sentence from Paul, uh, Philip Eby. I guess most of the people that are doing other web frameworks in Python have may heard his name because of his largest contribution to the Python community, which was the specification of Whiskey, the Web Server Gateway Interface. And look at any web framework in the Python community, there's none that's not built on top of it today. So yeah, there is it, the standard Python World Wide Web Interface. So if we look at the total scope, there's an evolution tree. And there's so much influence between all the other stuffs. And we are still working on it. There's innovation, there's evolution in it. There's so much things in the community that still goes on. Guillotina is one of the newest projects just released or announced last year and getting bigger, bigger and bigger. You have all the things in. Martin talked about Grok and Morpas, was influenced by those basics, all the other stuff. But hey, we continue. So it's all about innovations. 
We do have a roadmap for the Pi, uh, Plone 5, Plone 6 world. We go to the Python 3 Wonderland. We do go the way the REST APIs taking over the web. It's moving to JavaScript. We do have a headless uh, idea. And with Giotina, we have a new approach that could scale and speed up a lot of the things. But hey, let's take it with another word from Paul. Introduction for him because he will never remotely do a good job of introducing himself. <laughs> um, 20 years ago, Jim started working on the software that became Jim. I'll tell a funny story about that during the lunch. Uh, but it's amazing to go back and think about that. We had marketing brochures at the time, three big points. One of them was a database that feels like a file system. Still true today, still very different from everybody else in the market, still feels revolutionary. URLs you can read to your grandmother over the phone. Back then it was vignette, and this was your URL. Object publishing, still revolutionary today. And don't let your customers shoot you in the foot, which was hierarchical security and hierarchical objects. It's amazing to think about what Zoe and after that flown, based on these ideas, have done hundreds of companies around the world bet their business on Zope back in the day. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies built their businesses on top of clone, based on ideas that still haven't been caught up to. Uh, Philip Eby one time wrote a forward to a book, forward to a book about Zope and about Python, saying the rest of Python doesn't even know what they don't know when they yeah. talk about Zope and talk about Plone. So, um, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to make fun of Jim. Um, tonight, if you buy me a beer, I'll tell you the story about what Jim said when the venture capitalist said that everyone should work 70 hours a week. So instead, I'll tell you a different story. We should really get TV. Paul here for the next keynote well, next year for Python Web. Sure. He's a fantastic storyteller and he knows all about the history of Python and of the web frameworks. And it's the funny stuff, but what was the important stuff he said? Most of the ideas that came from the community, that came from Jim, are still ahead of the time of most of the web frameworks out there today. And that's the important thing. And if we look at all the stuff he has done, one of the core things was don't let the user shoot in their own foot. It's all about security. And that is the truth for Plone. But security is not a state, it's a process. It comes from a, p a state of mind where you work on. And we can build all these things because we are standing on the shoulders of those giants. We do have the SOAP security architecture, fine-grained permission systems, restricted Python and access control as a foundation, software design processes where we do use skeletons and code generators, configuration, most of the aspects, permissions and security inheritances so that add-ons normally don't harm your systems. Most of the uh, as, uh, OWAPs vectors did not apply, so long security cycles are realistic for Plone and we do have maintenance cycles of five to seven years in the plant community. And it's all about managing complex systems. And you could only do that if you're involving from a smaller working system. So starting all over again with another new system may teach you something more, but you don't get the same ground level or speed level to scale up. We can do the hard things because we are working on the boring technologies. We have laid the foundations of it. And one of the most important things is we as the community you always say, choose the right tool for the job. No Plone developer, no Zope developer has harmed to choose another framework like Flask, Tornado, Django, or so on, to move on. And that's all about. And it's all about the community and the conferences. We work together. 
If you look at San Francisco, it was the first conferences where we do have separated traps for related patent uh, technologies, and it's all about pyramid repose, SQL alchemy, and so on. It's all about the community, all about us joining together. And we are not done yet. We continue our work. And I want to invite you to the Plan Conference 2017 in Barcelona. Join us. There will be a separate track for related Python technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexander. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Alexander Plon, a history of Python web. Do we have any questions? Maybe one or two? Maybe later. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you so much. Next will be uh, Lasse Schürmann from Fun to Business. How open source changed his life. It will be a very interesting talk. Stay with us. Thank you. Anna, fertig? Can I open the I hope you have fun. <laughs> Thanks.